Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And can you believe it's been five years since I last did my Proxmox setup video? So we're gonna be revising that video and redoing all the processes because at that time it was only version, I think five. And now we're at version eight and tons of things has changed since then. Anyway, let's jump into it. Now Proxmox is a virtual environment that allows you to run VMs or containers into one system, thus allowing you to run multiple operating systems through one computer. Now I've been using Proxmox for a very long time along with uh, ESXi and most recently I tried to use XCPNG but kind of failed on that. Anyway, in this video what I'm going to be showing you is basically from start to finish of all the steps that I would take to get Proxmox up and running, installing a template and possibly installing another operating system on top of that. So Let's begin. The system we're gonna be using this on is the Zima Blade, which I have a video right on the top left over here if you wanna watch it. What I have hooked up to it right now is the EMMC, it's a 32 gigabyte. I have an NVMe flash, which is uh, half a terabyte, 512 gigabytes, and two SATA drives, which are two terabytes each, along with the eight gigs of RAM that's on the system. Again, this is only for testing purposes, and eight gigs of RAM is nowhere near enough of RAM just to run a virtual environment. You should at least get 16 or 32 or even more if you can. The more the better because the more operating systems you can run. Jumping into the BIOS, the first thing you need to make sure is that you actually have something like virtualization enabled and VT-D, which allows you to pass through your PCIe cards. And then obviously the Intel virtualization technology, which allows you to run virtual machines. Then using any boot media that you have, either Ventoy or using uh, Etcher to burn into USB drive, um, load up the operating system for Proxmox and we're going to boot from there. So if you've installed Proxmox before, this environment is probably familiar to you. It's super easy to go through and they'll just ask a few questions on what you need. Now the way I'm going to have it set up on my end is I'm going to install Proxmox onto the EMMC, which is only 32 gigs, but I'm not going to be really using it for anything else other than the operating system. Then I'm going to lay out the 512 NVMe drive just for virtual machines. And then the two SATA drives is actually going to be passed through to another operating system like TrueNAS or something. So the host system will actually not be able to see the two hard drives. So here we are at the installer screen. Unfortunately, it doesn't play nice with uh, using KVM. So I am actually going to have to hit enter and figure out the options on the bottom. Now, because the setup that I have explained earlier, um, it's going to be a little weird. I don't want any of these uh, options to be selected. The only thing I wanted selected was uh, just the 32 gigabyte uh, EMMC. So I'm going to hit tab, tab, tab again, and then go through next. It's, it's down there, but again, the screen's not showing the way it's supposed to. Select the options that you want, and I'm just going to select New York over here, time zone, and then set up your root password and a mailing address. So what I usually do is just change this to .NET and it could be mail at example.net, but you should change it to whatever email you have. So in case you need to get uh, certain notifications. Now, in this case, uh, you can name this anything you want. I do already have something called PVE. So I'm just going to call this PVE test.lan and the IP address is static. You have to set it through here. So I'm going to leave it as 202, which isn't a problem for me. And that is it. Now the installation process takes about maybe 10 minutes. Now that everything is all said and done and installed, all we have to do is just navigate over to the website with that IP address that we had earlier, which is 192.168.105.202.8006. That's the port number that you need to uh, run to get to the web user interface. So here we are. Username is going to be root and it's the password that we made earlier. Now, as a disclaimer, never install this onto your EMMC. Now, I had to go through hoops and bypass certain things just to get it to install on my EMMC. But think of EMMC like a SD card. Um, because Proxmox does a lot of logging, you're going to burn through that EMMC pretty quick if you leave it on there. So don't even, I don't recommend you doing this on EMMC, but because I'm generating this video, I put it on the EMMC just to show you certain practices. So. Here we are on our main uh, server itself. So let's take care of the hard drive problem that we have right now. Now we're gonna have our local PV, which is where the operating system sits. And then we also have our local LVM where usually the virtual machines and containers would sit. 
Now, I'm gonna go over to the PVE test right over here and head over to disk. Now, we're gonna have a bunch of disks that actually has data on there, and I'm gonna wipe out each one because I don't wanna use any of those. Uh, first, the NVMe, that's where I wanna actually store all my containers, ISOs, and VMs. So I'm gonna go over here and wipe the disk. So I'm gonna hit yes, it's gonna delete all the partitions and leave it as a blank disk. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for SDA, which is my two terabyte hard drive, and SDB, which is also my other two terabyte hard drives. All right, and there we have it. Now, next thing we need to do is go over to directory and we are gonna create a directory and we're gonna select our NVMe drive. It's gonna show you how much space we have and what it is. So I'm gonna select that. The file system I'm gonna use is ext4 and I'm gonna name this uh, NVMe. And we are gonna create the storage. And that's basically about it. It'll actually attach itself over here. We're not really done yet because we have to allow it to allocate certain things like VM, ISOs, backups, and stuff like that. So as of right now, actually, all the options are in. If you go over to Data Center and you don't see those options, you could actually head over to this one right over here, um, head over to Storage, go to NVMe, and then you can hit Edit and choose the options that you want. So Disk ISO, uh, Disk Image, ISO, Container, stuff like that. And it seems to be everything is selected. Just so I don't write over my uh, EMMC, what I'm gonna do with the local LVM is head over to edit and remove remove those options basically this way uh, maybe a container because it doesn't let you write completely i just don't want to be able to use it for certain things so now that we have our storage set now we can start configuring the rest of it now i'm going to head over to pve and head over to repositories and because this is um, a home lab and not in a production use um, what i would recommend is actually adding and let me hit OK on that. Not the enterprise version of uh, the repository, but the no subscription. This way I could still get updates. So I'm gonna hit add on that. So now I have a no subscription update. And you can remove these uh, enterprise versions because I'm not gonna be using it. So I'm gonna hit disable for that. And this enterprise version as well, I'm gonna hit disable for that. And then now I could reload, head over to updates, refresh this and it should start loading in with new packages that this is behind. Technically I am behind because this is 8.0.3 and I think it's up to 8.0.4 right now. So once I could load that, a new list of stuff should start coming up. And there we go. Now, I, since this is a fresh install, might as well just go ahead and upgrade it, but I'm not gonna take the time to do that. So I'm just gonna leave this for now. But instead, what I'm gonna do next is actually enable something called IOMMU. And IOMMU is basically allows you to pass through your PCIe interfaces. So if you got something like a Zima Blade where you have an exposed PCIe that you could utilize, or if you got a graphic card you got to pass, uh, you do need to enable IOMMU. So let's do that. Now, first thing we're going to do is nano into etc default grub. And in here, it's going to say grub command line quiet. And all you need to do is Intel underscore IOMMU equals on, and then reboot the machine. Now, if you're on AMD, you just switch to Intel to AMD like this, and it'll be for AMD. So since I am using an Intel chipset, I'm gonna leave that, save that buffer, and then I'm gonna do update grub. It's gonna update the grub configurations that we just put in, and then update uh, init RAM FS, or init RAM file system, dash u we're going to upgrade that as well generally i don't think it's needed to upgrade the second one i just do it as a practice because i'm upgrading the grub anyway but once you're done with that reboot the system and iommu will be uh, usable okay so now i'm going to hit reboot and let the system reboot now i can monitor this through my kvm so i could actually see this rebooting and there we have it i can head back into this uh screen and if I go over to summary, you should still see some information pass through. And that means it's finished rebooting and I wish we should be able to use this again. All right, first up, what we need to do is download some sort of ISO. So we're gonna head over to our NVMe and in the ISO images, you can either upload something that you have already on your system or you could download from URL, which is a new thing that they added and I really like. So what I'm gonna do is go over to Ubuntu and go over to download. And what we're gonna be doing is actually creating a template so we don't have to constantly install operating systems constantly. Uh, so I'm gonna go over to download Ubuntu. I'm gonna download 22.04.
what I like to do is just go over here, copy down the link, cancel this because I don't need to download it on this machine. Go to URL, paste that link over here on top. And then down here, I'm just gonna name it Ubuntu dash two two dot zero four dot three dash desktop ISO. Give this about, I don't know, depending on the speed of your internet, a few minutes. Now, while that takes the time to download, I'm gonna explain something about cloning your templates. So anytime that you have an installed system and you decide to turn it into a template, it's gonna retain all the system IDs and um, system UIDs for that particular system. So when you clone it and turn it into from a template to a clone, uh, it will still retain that system and it confuses the hell out of your network. So anytime that you clone a system, you actually have to go in and kind of like clear out all the system IDs or change the MAC address or do certain things just to make it sure it's a different system. It's particularly annoying more towards in the Windows side than in Linux, but you either system or any system that you do to decide to turn into a template and clone, you will run into this issue. Now, what we're gonna be installing is Ubuntu, but we're gonna do something called the OEM install. And the OEM install will actually bypass that and it'll be like a fresh install or fresh prompts every time you boot it up for the first time. This way you can actually install the operating system like you normally would, install the software that you need like um, QEMU guest editions or some stuff like that or drivers. And then once you turn, shut it down, turn it into a clone, when you create a new template, it automatically thinks it's a new system, so it'll give it new system IDs. All right, now the ISO is done downloading, what we're gonna do is create a new VM. So we're gonna head over to the top right, create new VM, and we're gonna call this whatever you want. Now, because this is gonna be my template, I'm just gonna name it 500, because most of the time, everything would be 100, 101, 102, 500, so I don't have any interference with anything. So I'm gonna call this Ubuntu temp. I'm gonna hit next. The operating system I'm gonna choose is, let's choose uh, this for NVMe, and then let's choose this one. And then I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna add the QEMU agent and leave everything as default. The disk I'm gonna leave as 32 gigabytes, also in SCSI, which is fine. Uh, if you are using NVMe, which we are, we're gonna use write through and discard. And then I'm gonna hit next. CPU, I'm gonna give it about two cores. And for this type, you could either use this emulation or you can head over to host if you want. This is a little bit easier if you're gonna clone something and it goes onto another machine. So next we have the amount of RAM that we wanna select. And for something like Ubuntu, we could do four gigs of RAM, which is 4096. And then I'm gonna go into network. I'm gonna leave this as normal and then finish with this setup. All right, once we're all set, we could just go in and hit start head over to console, and then let that boot up so we could actually install the OEM version. Now from here, what we wanna do is install OEM. All right, so here we go. Uh, just make sure it says install OEM mode for manufacturers only. And then I'm gonna hit continue, go through the setup prompts. Um, you're not gonna create a username here. It'll actually create a OEM user just so you can install software in between the next boot. So I'm gonna go through this normally. If you want to install third party, you can. I'm gonna hit continue on this and just leave everything as normal. Erase the entire disk, and I'm gonna hit install now. Continue for this. And then we'll just finish up the prompts. Now here you really can't configure the usernames, don't worry about that because that gets deleted afterwards. As far as the computer name, you can leave this as is too because it gets changed when you first boot the next time. So we're just gonna create a password for this just so we can add software in here with an actual OEM user. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, which uh, the Zima Blade isn't as fast as I want it to be, but it's gonna take like about five to 10 minutes to copy all the files, install everything. And then we're gonna go into the OEM prompt to install uh, the QEMU agent, and then we'll reboot it into like a fresh install. Okay, after the first reboot, uh, you'll be presented with this screen. You're still in the OEM installer. As you can see, there's like a little thing right over here. But from here on, you can install the applications that you need just to prep it from having to install it a couple of times. So I'm gonna head over to the terminal and install uh, guest editions or the QEMU guest agent. The password that we created for the OEM and then now we can install whatever we want. So if you have installation that you always know you will use, say something like TeamViewer or Rust Desk or something like that, 
uh, you can install it now. And then once you convert it into a template, the next time when you boot it up, those software will be pre-installed already. All right, so say I'm done installing all the software that I need. I could close this out. Click on this, prepare for shipping. Finish it this up. And this will end the OEM installing process. So OEM config will run next time you system boot. So I'm gonna hit okay. And literally shut this down. Power this off. And now we convert this into a template. And every time when we clone this, we'll be presented with a brand new install screen. So I'm gonna wait for this to finish up. Convert to template. Yes on that. And then now it's converted as a template. Now what I could do is now I'm gonna clone this and there's a couple of options. You could do link clone or full clone. I tend to use full clone, but if you use link clone, it's actually a lot smaller because you're sharing the resources with the original clone. Um, but I just use full clone in, in, in general. Now my VM ID will be whatever I want. I'm gonna call this Ubuntu 2.2.22. And same as, yeah, I'm gonna use NVMe as the storage. And I'm gonna hit clone. Give this like a minute or two and it'll create all the stuff that you need. And now since everything's all cloned up, I could hit start, jump into the console. It's gonna boot into the desktop, but it's gonna give you that install menu you, where you have to generate your own username, uh, your location and all this other stuff. And it'll generate all the new system IDs for you so you don't have to do it every time you clone the device. So here we go, it started up. It's gonna give you the first uh, uh, install wizard or the first login wizard. And that's why I like the OEM install. It's actually a pretty nifty tool. A lot of people don't do this, um, but once I talk about OEM install as far as a template, it makes sense. Now, because I already have QEMU guest agent installed, uh, I could go over to summary and you could see it's already pulling up the IP address because it's communicating through the guest agent installer already. So that's what I would do mainly for templates. Now, the next thing I do is a little tricky because we do have to get into the console and that's actually passing through the full physical drive. Now, if you're gonna use something like TrueNAS or OMV, uh, something like that, that requires the full hard drive to be passed through, this is what you would do. So right now I have um, 100 as my Ubuntu or just think of it as like TrueNAS or whatever it can be. I'm gonna head over to Shell and in here we're gonna nano ETC PVE and then there's QEMU server, and there should be numbers, 100 and 500, 500 being our template. So I'm gonna go into configure the 100 config. And what we wanna add basically is another SCSI, or we could do uh, SATA, whatever you want. Uh, you could change it to whatever you need. And then we're gonna do dev SDA. So we know SDA is one of the hard drives. If we need another one, oh, remember to change this to one. We would do SCSI two, dev sdb once we save this configuration and then we head over back into our ubuntu and hardware you're going to see new hard drives pop up like this so obviously it's not going to detect it yet because i do have to power down this uh, system because it's not a hot swap uh, configuration but let me get through this install and i'm going to show you that it's actually going to be able to see the physical hard drives all right, now that we're done with the post installation, as you can see, we're booted back into Ubuntu and we transferred over the two hard drives. So what I'm gonna do now is head over to GNOME Disk Utility, which is this one right here. And we should be able to see two, ter two terabyte hard drives, which we have right here. And you can see they are fully passed through. So now if you, that means if you're using something like FreeNAS, it should be able to detect the hard drives and then you should be able to create your shares. Anyway, that is it for this tutorial. It was just a quick install, setting up some uh, subscription purposes stuff, setting up hard drives, setting up a template, uh, passing through hard drives to your uh, VM. And uh, that's about it. I mean, there's a few more things that we could play around with down the road, which is like networking and stuff like that. But uh, for now, that's all I got for you. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.